Greetings again, my AP Calc AB friends. We're looking at our last video that covers the combination topic 7.3 and 7.4, really all things dealing with slope fields. And then after this, we're going to move into the really nitty gritty of unit seven. That's how to solve differential equations. It's hard to believe, but you're kind of at the halfway point of unit seven. It feels like we just began. So let's take a look at a couple of examples, assorted slope field problems. And we're gonna revisit another multiple choice question where you are given a slope field and you are doing a matching, right? What is the general solution to the differential equation that's generated, uh, that's generating, I guess, the slope field to the right? Well, this is where I'm gonna to have to make a little apology because I told you about this really cool four corner strategy and it does work a lot of the time but there's a few instances that it doesn't work so well let's see what I mean first of all finding corners in this one might be a little bit trickier because of the extra little pieces of some slope segments that were generated by this computer program that I used. So maybe we could go after that point, negative nine comma nine. Well, immediately you're going to notice if you try to do that, especially without the benefit of a calculator, and this is going to be a no calculator question, we're stuck with trying to figure out, whoa, 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 hold on right there. What the heck? We don't know what the cosine of nine is, do we? So that's a lousy strategy. It's just not going to work. So what you're going to have to do instead is just kind of think about all of these answers and come to the realization that these seem to all be one of two different kinds of functions, either a cosine or a sine. Some are negative, some are positive. So maybe we could look at these slope segments and try to come up with some type of a curve that would look like it mimics these particular segments. So the best thing that I could probably prescribe is to maybe start here at the origin. And it looks like we probably would increase here, but then maybe decrease perhaps. And then you see down below, we have these little segments that are kind of doing that. And then I think we just go back up again. And Oh yeah, if I do this on the other side, it's just more of the same, right? It's more of the same. Now, I probably aren't gonna go that low. In fact, I don't think I am judging by these equations. So it's really not a big deal if you don't stop this where, where the highs and lows are going to be at one and negative one. But I can pretty much assure you that's what this graph is really going to look like, okay? Now, what equation does this graph resemble? Well, the graph that starts here at the origin and then sort of increases and then decreases back to the x-axis and then decreases to a minimum and then increases back to the x-axis, 100% this is the sine curve. And it's the positive sign. It's not upside down sign where you'd have a negative in front and you'd have this kind of business going on. So really, all we got to do is match this to the correct sign, and it's E. And then also, the plus C is really something that we don't have to worry about, and I'm going to tell you why. We don't know what our initial condition is for this problem. For all we know, this graph, oh, I wish this all would stay together. <laughs> Boy, I spoiled that moment. Let me redraw this, and then let's try this again. We don't know where this graph is actually going to be living. Okay, it can adhere to these slope segments in any of these positions. And that's really what the role is of that plus C. And so we can go ahead and match with a general solution with the plus C much the same way that we could if it had a specific solution. All right, let's take a look at our final example number five. This is really more of a topic 7.4 because we're really reasoning with slope fields here. It says consider the differential equation. Well, I will. dy over dx equals x squared times y minus one. Describe all the points in the xy plane for which the slopes are positive. Wow. Okay. Does that mean that we have to sketch all these slope fields? That could be a lot of work. And I don't know about you, but I'm not seeing 
a graph to, to sketch them on. So no, we're not going to have to do that. Instead, we're going to have to do exactly what the topic says, and that's reason. So what do you want out of this dy dx? Well, the dy dx are the slopes, and it says I want the slopes to be positive. So in order for dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, to be positive, well, that means that x squared quantity y minus 1 must be positive. OK, well, we're on to something here. Well, wait a minute. x squared. I think he's got a really good chance of being positive. All the time? No. There's one number that I can think of that if we inserted for x, we would not be positive. Can you think of that number? I heard you. Zero. Good job. I heard you guys. Nice. So yes, x squared is always going to be positive, except when x is 0. And so you want to document that. You want to remember that. All right. Well, then y minus 1, what about his story? Well, y minus 1 is always positive when y is greater than 1. Pretty cut and dry. So basically, we just need to put these ideas together. And the description of the points where we have positive slopes and it would be nice to write a full sentence there. So we'll say the slopes are positive. And just state those two conditions. When x is not equal to 0 and y is greater than 1. And that basically means any x value in the world except 0. So that's a lot of x's, but only when y is above 1. So if you had a graph, and I know I'm probably kind of beating the horse dead here, and you don't need to kind of go into this much detail. But basically, all of the points that would live all in this realm, and in this realm here, as long as we were above 1. We couldn't be equal to 1 on the y, and we definitely can't be along the y-axis because x can't be 0. So all of the little slope segments, if my goodness, if we were going to draw them all in, that would be fun, right? Would all have a positive orientation to them. And that's really the visual of what's happening here. And one thing that's pretty cool about this is you could graph this and determine. And what would be a Mr. Record video without ending with a little bit of graphing calculator interface? So let's take a look at what the graph might look like. All right, this should be fun. I've got my TI Inspire going. I know those of you watching that use the T84, it's a little bit different interface to sketch a slope field. You can do it on your graphing calculator. It's something that you can probably look up on YouTube or ask your teacher. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show what this would look like with the Inspire. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to go to a, just a generic scratch pad where I can do some graphing. And then what I want to do is I want to go into the menu because I have to tell the calculator that I want to graph a differential equation. It's our option number eight. And so when I choose that, what I will see immediately is y1 prime. You see that little bitty baby prime mark? And it's asking me to enter this differential equation. Well, if you remember, that equation was x squared. I'm going to go ahead and put the multiply in there. I don't really think I need it, but it's good. And then I'm going to put y, and this is a little bit of a tricky thing here. If you were to put a y into the differential equation field for the TI Inspire, you do need a 1 acting as a subscript. Basically, you need to mimic the y that's out here. All right. I don't want to get into why that's the case, but you're, you're going to get um, probably nothing as a result if you don't put the y1 in there. And then um, I don't really need to put anything else. You could put an initial condition here if you wanted to, but it's not required for this particular problem. I think all I got to do is just hit enter and you're going to see some slope segments. Now you could do a variety of things with this. You could change the boundaries to get a, a wider range of segments. You can actually tell the calculator 
how many slope segments to put across the page. There's a lot of different parameters that you can do with this. Um, you can still grab the page and move it around, which is kind of fun, right? Now, the thing about this that I wanted to demonstrate is we were determining that the slope segments that are above the line y equal 1 are all supposed to be positive, and the ones where x is not equal to 0. And this does a fairly decent job, I suppose, at depicting that. It's just that so many of these segments here are so steep that it's hard to tell that they're positive. They almost look like they're straight vertical, but I assure you they're not. So it's not the greatest example. But I, but I do want to uh, also indicate that the ones that look like they're straddling the y-axis here do not have an x value of zero. You can see that they're centered just a little bit to the right of the y-axis, so they probably have an x value of like 0.1 or 0.2. But by and large, you can see that everything above one is positive. And so it's just kind of a neat visual demonstration of what we just figured out analytically. Always, if you like the videos, please subscribe. We're kind of on the race to a thousand subscribers. We'd like to be able to do that before spring break. And with the help of you guys and the students from Avon High School, we hope to accomplish that. And as always, stick around for more videos in the future. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.